Well, hey everyone, we are back for part two of the SR20 DET swap in my 1991 Nissan 240SX. And in the last video, I believe we left off, I had the engine in the car, on the mounts, wiring harness hooked up. I had to re-pull the engine out um, to fix an issue with the throwout bearing. I didn't install it on the shift fork right, so I got that dealt with. I don't know, maybe we'll get it started tonight. I doubt it, but we're gonna try. All right, we got the wiring harness all back in, nice and pretty. And I'm not a super huge fan of how some of it comes together. I mean, it looks kind of tacky, but whatever. Keep going. I don't know how much I'm actually gonna film of this because something's going on with my camera. I messed with a bunch of the settings and now everything is washed out. I would rather work on the car than spend a lot of time trying to figure out, you know, what's going on with my camera. So in the meantime, I'll just kind of do check check-ins like I did in the last video. And yeah, I'll keep going. Got the radiator in. And also got the fan in. And I'm just going with the same fan that I was using before. It cooled the K fine. I'm sure it'll cool the SR fine. If not, we'll go from there. This is my lower radiator hose setup. So maintaining the cooler that we have for the power steering. And then the upper hose, which actually I need to put on. And there we got it installed. So the uh, intake setup is going to be kind of weird. I might actually have to uh, trim this pipe here down some because you can see where the, the seam is. Um, I don't want to cut this one, but I might cut that one. It's kind of a, just a spare piece anyway. Um, and it, it fits perfectly uh, for my little, I guess, you know, bend here. And I'll do the Z32 math in, and then I've got a short little uh, air filter that should fit right there. Uh, I got the power steering on and tighten down. I'm going to have to pull this hose back maybe with some zip ties or something. It's not hitting the pulley but I don't want it to. We'll get the fan plugged in and then aside from the you know, all the vacuum lines and stuff for the intercooler we might be to where we can start it. Back for another update, got the oil filter relocation mounted and got the um, manual oil pressure gauge hooked up through here. I don't know, hopefully that's sufficient. Got all my lower harness stuff hooked up, all my grounds, all my grounds. I extended this one right here came off the wiring specialties harness and put it down there because the bolt where it was supposed to go I think is that one right there and there's a bolt broken off in there and I don't want to deal with it been doing more work and finally getting the uh, intercooler piping in so I showed you guys all this last time. Uh, intercooler piping, intercooler. So it's just kind of got like these really cheesy um, mounts that I mocked up. I'm still trying to, you know, figure out something there. This is a CX Racing intercooler and it's actually a piece of crap. I hate it. It doesn't come, you know, like with the mount here in the middle like some others I've seen. Should have just bought a good one. So we got the intercooler piping and 
I'm going to change this setup. It's just temporary. All right. Right as I'm uh, losing daylight, the intercooler is 90%. Maybe, obviously, I've still got some clamps and stuff. The air cleaner is in. I'm probably, like I said earlier, still going to have to cut the pipe down there. Need to put the blowout valve on, which is right there. But we're actually going to try and start this. We're going to see. I got to put the battery in. We're going to see what happens when we try to start it. All right. We got power. It wants to. All right, we're gonna try again. It runs. It sounds wicked. I only have the down pipe for now, but had a pretty good lobe. I know it's not cammed, so it's probably just blowing the cobwebs out and stuff, but we're gonna call it there on this video, I think. I don't know, maybe I'll film more later. I know I need to finish this thing up and uh, I don't know, stand by. I did decide to continue this video working on the car and I've been wrenching away on it doing some things so now the intercooler piping is all 100% bolted down the intercooler is also <clears throat> secured got the blow off valve on and what I was working on just now was uh, some of the vacuum lines for it. We got the air cleaner on. I need to do the overflow tank. I need to find a battery. I need to get all of the vacuum lines buttoned up. I think this thing is actually going to be ready. So also the front bumper cover will fit back on on top of the intercooler. I wasn't sure if it would, but apparently it will. And fender. Just doing a rattle can on this fender. And that's about as bright as I think I can get it. We'll get that fender put on and the bumper cover. Everything else under the hood that I mentioned. And then we'll be good to go, maybe. All right, so final touches on this video. I'm finally gonna end it. A couple of clips here. I'm going to put in of the car running today. Just I did them through my cell phone, so apologize for the less than par quality.
the SR20 swap is complete and all I need to do is figure out something for a battery so I could still put a battery in here in this little spot um, the battery I have is too big it won't sit flush I can't secure it down I can get a smaller battery to fit there or I can do a relocation which would be to the back the you know overflow needs to be bolted down still but I've got all of my intercooler piping done I've got my vacuum lines I mean they're not the greatest you know I'm gonna tee my boost gauge into my fuel pressure regulator and I think that's it I need to finish bolting down the bumper it's just kind of sitting on there for now the bumper cover but appreciate you guys watching the next video has a little bit of a surprise I already know what I'm gonna do with it but in that video I sound unsure or maybe a different direction anyway thank you for watching and we'll catch you on the next one. Oh yeah, I took the exhaust off. Uh, I gotta do something with that. So, okay, I guess one more thing. Um, in those two short clips of the car running, it was misfiring. So in the first clips of me running the car it was loping like it had a cam and I think that was just because none of the vacuum lines were hooked up almost nothing was hooked up so I got everything all hooked up and the car is struggling to start it's taken a long time to start I messed with a bunch of stuff today not sure if I got anything figured out but in those two clips it was easy relatively easy to start I don't even know anyway so it's misfiring I gotta figure out what's going on there I'm gonna get the boost gauge put in and yeah I don't know we'll figure it out thanks for watching